Mm -hmm. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water, the never drying fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. You're the living water. The never drying fountain. Comforter and counselor, take complete control. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Welcome, Holy Spirit. Be here with your presence. Fill me with your power. Live inside of me. Live inside of me. Please live inside of me. Amen. Amen. And M1, you did great too. <laughs> Praise Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Emily. And I thank you. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you, Tricia. Thank you, Uncle Phil. Thank you, and Emily. Amen. Mary Erin. Yes. Uh, uh, Mary uh, would like to give a teaching. And her, the title of her teaching is Eucharistic Miracles and the Real Presence. Amen. Okay, Mary Erin. I'm glad that you, uh, are, you are going to talk on this topic because... Nowadays, there are not so many people who believe 
in the real presence of the Lord in the Eucharist. There are many people sad to say, even, even Catholics, Roman Catholics, they say that it's only a symbol. You know, it's only a symbol that the, the, the bread and will, you know, they do not believe that the bread is really the body of, will become the body of Jesus after the priest will pray the epiclesis, you know, over the bread and the wine uh, is not really the blood of Jesus, even though the priest already prayed the epiclesis or the, the uh, prayer to uh, for consecration and the transubstantiation, transubstantiation will occur right there and then. And okay, Mary, I know you have a lot to say about this. Go ahead, Mary Erin, thank you. All right, so Eucharistic miracles and the real presence. I saw a sign recently that said, the fact that there's a highway to hell and only a stairway to heaven says a lot about anticipated traffic numbers. <laughs> well, of course, that's just silly. Um, that's what they call bumper sticker psychology. But there's a little line in there that actually is true about as Catholics that we can say the Eucharist is our highway to heaven. Sadly, many Catholics, like Brother Bob just said, do not truly believe that the Eucharist is the actual body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. There was a, a Pew study from real recently, just two and a half years ago, and it showed that 69, so that's almost 70% of Catholics said that they believe the bread and wine at Mass is not Jesus, but just a symbol. Uh, I, so that means that 31% of Catholics, that's about one in three, only those believe in the real presence of Jesus in the Eucharist. Also astonishing is that one in five Catholics, it's 22%, they just reject the idea of transubstantiation, even though they know it's a church teaching. You may have heard of Bishop Robert Barron. He was astounded by these findings. Any Catholic worth his or her salt knows this is a central teaching. It's a basic tenet of Catholicism. So consider this teaching here, a little refresher course in the true presence of Jesus in the Holy Eucharist. To begin, you will notice at every Catholic mass following the command of Jesus himself, that the priest, the celebrant, raises the host and says, take this, all of you, and eat it. This is my body, which will be given up for you. Then he lifts the cup and says, take this, all of you, and drink from it. This is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and everlasting covenant. It will be shed for you and for all, so that sins may get, be forgiven. Do this in memory of me. We hear this every time we go to Mass. Well, the doctrine of transubstantiation, which is the teaching that the bread and wine are converted into the actual flesh and blood of Jesus Christ, it's difficult for some people. When, even when Christ first told his followers about it, many of those rejected him. And that was Jesus personally telling them. They still decided to reject it. Well, Jesus didn't clarify his statement or correct their misunderstanding. He simply repeated his command to the disciples at the Last Supper. And some Christians today still have trouble accepting this teaching. Throughout history, though, many people have reported miracles that brought them back to this truth. The church has recognized over 100 Eucharistic miracles many of which occurred during times of weakened faith about this transubstantiation. There were some recent studies that show two thirds of Catholics appear to have weakened faith. I mean, that is just really sad, but those are the days we're living in right now. 
Father Rob Spitzer, if any of you watch uh, EWTN, there's a really great show called Father Spitzer's Universe. He reminds us that the a Eucharistic miracle occurs every day at every Holy Mass across the world when the substance of bread and wine is transformed into the substance of Jesus, body and blood. However, the term Eucharistic miracle also refers to extraordinary empirical signs of Jesus' presence in the Eucharist. And you may have heard of some of these, like a bleeding host or the transmutation of a consecrated host that becomes a piece of actual flesh. Some notable of these Eucharistic miracles happened centuries ago, like the one of the more famous ones is the Eucharistic miracle of Lanciano, Italy. It was like 700 years ago, after, or 700 years after Christ's death. Just quickly, you may recall that that miracle happened to a priest who was having doubts himself that the bread and wine really became the body and blood of Jesus. Well, after that priest was saying mass, he spoke the solemn words of consecration. The host that he was holding suddenly changed into a circle of flesh and the wine that he had transformed into blood. These, the flesh was later examined and again, it was examined in 1971 by a team of medical experts that identified it as human heart tissue and blood and the type of blood AB. And even now, hundreds of years later, this flesh from 700 years after Christ's death is still in an uncorrupted and fresh state. If you ever have an opportunity to go to Lanciano, Italy, you can see it at the Church of St. Francis there. So that was that one. Now, other of, of these Eucharistic mir miracles have happened more recently, such as the scientifically proven miracle of Buenos Aires in 1992 to 1996. But did you know there's also a few that have taken place just in the past 20 years. So I'm gonna just share four of these stories that are approved Eucharistic miracles, and you'll wanna pay attention. The first one is uh, Legnica. It's a bleeding host in Poland. On Christmas day, this is just seven years ago in Poland in 2013 at St. Hyacinth Church in Poland, a consecrated host fell on the floor. The host was then put into a container of water so it would dissolve. But instead, these red stains dripped out from the host in the water. It was examined later by a research institute, including the Department of Forensic Medicine, and they concluded that the image and the fragments were found containing parts of uh, heart muscle. It's called a, I don't know this, they gave the, the scientific name of the cross striated muscle. The additional research found that the tissue had indications that this particular heart muscle was that of a person who had been in great physical distress. It, this bleeding host in Poland was approved for veneration then in April 2016, just three years later, by a bishop in Legnica who said that it has all the hallmarks of a Eucharistic miracle. Then the second of these uh, recent Eucharistic miracles is in Mexico. In October 2006, a Catholic church in the Diocese of Mexico held a retreat. You've been on the retreat, I'm sure. So imagine that during mass, you saw two priests and a nun distributing communion. Then the nun looked at the priest and she had tears in her eyes. She held up the host that she was holding to show it had begun to bleed actual blood was dripping from the host. 
to determine just what happened, the bishop uh, at Castro asked a Dr. Ricardo Castanion Gomez, who had also coincidentally researched the Eucharistic miracle in Buenos Aires, he conducted further scientific research. And in the slide number 16, the, the research concluded that the reddish substance analyzed was blood. And in it, there was hemoglobin and DNA of human origin, and it was type blood type AB, similar to the one found in the host of Lanciano, and also in the Holy Shroud of Turin. Can you imagine? Then there's a third Eucharistic min, min, miracle. This one happened in Chiritakonam, India. Though most of the Eucharistic miracles have to do with the bleeding host, the one in India was different. One April morning in 2001, a priest, Father Johnson Karur of St. Mary's Parish, exposed the Blessed Sacrament for adoration. So imagine you're sitting at Eucharistic adoration at your church. Well, that priest, Father Karur, noticed three dots on the host, and he shared what he saw with the people present at adoration, and they also saw the dots. The priest then left, he had out of town for a week, and when he came back, he saw that the host and the three dots had developed into an image of a human face. He thought, am I going crazy? He, to ensure that it wasn't his imagination, he asked an altar server, come look. The altar server said, I see the figure of a man. After mass, Father Karur had a local photographer capture the image of the host. We don't have the actual image here, I, but if you Google the miracle at Shiratakonam, India, you can see the image that they had in the photograph. How amazing to see the face of Jesus in the Eucharist. That actually happened to a friend of mine and me. We were on a pilgrimage in 2016 visiting the Sacre Coeur Church in Paris, France. And even though I cannot, I mean, I just saw it and I, probably couldn't draw what it looked like, but um, Sister Vicky downloaded an image that um, was really similar to what I had explained, the, what it looked like, and it's in the next slide. It's, let's see, this is the one in Poland. <clears throat> that one, so this, I mean, it doesn't look exactly like that. The Jesus that I saw had a crown of thorns, but he was facing the other way. And I'm, my friend and I both thought, are you kidding? We thought like maybe they drew a picture on the host that was presented there in the adoration chapel, but it wasn't. No one else saw it. Everyone else just saw a plain round white host. But one girl, Erlinda and I in the pilgrimage, we saw an image of Jesus' face in that host. And I mean, you just never forget that. Well, there's a, an, been another um, last uh, Eucharistic miracle that happened in Sokolka, Poland in 2008. And that uh, was at the Church of St. Anthony. So at morning mass, a priest accidentally dropped a host while distributing communion. Then they picked up the host and put it in a small container of water. The priest, Father Stanislaw, asked the sacristan, a sister Julia of the Congregation of Eucharistic Sisters. How interesting that she, this sister, was from the Eucharistic Sisters, happened to witness a Eucharistic miracle and told her to place the container in a safe in the sacristy. After a week, Sister Julia checked on the host. When she opened the safe, she smelled something like unleavened bread, and the host had a red blood stain on it. Immediately, the nun and priest told their archbishop, Edward Ozorowski, about the host. 
the bishop had the stained host taken out of the container and placed on a corporal where it stayed in the tabernacle for three years. During this time, the stained fragment of the host dried out and it appeared more like a blood stain or a clot. But several studies were commissioned on this host. The studies found that this altered fragment of the host is identical to the myocardial, which is the heart tissue of a person who is nearing death. Additionally, the structure of the muscle fibers is that the bread, they're interwoven in a way that was impossible to produce by human means. So for, for that, that is all I have about the Eucharistic miracles. And if you wanted to learn more about it, um, you can see uh, there's the Eucharistic miracle overseen by Archbishop Bergoglio, who is now our Pope Francis. And um, there's an article that was written by Father uh, Spitzer, and it's called Contemporary Scientifically Validated Miracles Associated with Blessed Mary, Saints, and the Holy Eucharist. And here's the information, just if you wanted to like take a picture of it with your cell phone, that's a lot of information to remember. But um, I, for us believers, a Eucharistic miracle demonstrates something that we already believe. We need to pay attention and to realize that the Eucharist is the true presence, the body, blood, soul, and divinity of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I'll end with um, this simple two-line lyrics to this little song that the Catholic school children sing at our daily mass after they receive communion. Um, if you know the, the musician, um, uh, his name is Michael John Poitier. So he just, and if anyone knows the song, you can sing it. I can, I sing like Lucy Ricardo. You don't want to hear me sing it, but the words are just, oh, sacred heart of Jesus, truly present in the Holy Eucharist, I place all my trust in you. And with that, I will just say, may you believe in the true presence and the Eucharist. Amen. Are you hurting and broken within? Overwhelmed by the weight of your sin, Jesus is calling. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Leave behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus is calling. Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy. From the ashes, a new life is born. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, what 
a savior isn't he wonderful sing hallelujah christ is risen bow down before him for he is lord of all sing hallelujah christ is risen thank you lord oh what a savior sing hallelujah christ is risen bow down before him for he is lord of all sing hallelujah christ is risen oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of jesus christ oh come to the altar the father's arms are open wide forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Tell the world of the treasure you found. 